Hello guys, uh, welcome to this tutorial. Um, this is a tutorial to show us how we can integrate Stripe card payment in an Angular Laravel single page application. So for the purpose of this course, we will be working with Angular 9 and Laravel 7. So, um, and in a nutshell, um, this is what we're going to be doing like um, just a, a schematic of uh, representation of what we will be doing. Um, this is what it involves. Um, in order for this to work, we have our client, which is our Angular application there. Uh, we have the back end, which is the Laravel um, application running here. So um, first thing is we send a request to our server and then the server sends um, a request to stripe to create a payment intent now if you have been used to um, integrating stripe to your applications um, before september 2019 um, it was done differently but as from september 2019 this is how it's been it's now been done like things have changed the procedures have changed and you first need to have a payment intent before you can complete a payment transaction so that is why the first step is to send that initial request to your server and your server then communicates with stripe to um get a payment intent which is returned as an object and in that object you have your intent id and you also have your client secret and some other parameters as well now that is sent back to your client and then you can enter um the further details you know to complete the transaction such as the amount um the email of the person making the transaction and, and a few other things as well so you enter those in that then gets sent to the stripe um, server and the payment is completed obviously you put in your card details at this stage as well um, and then it's returned to your client and then the client can then send um, details of the payment to your server and then you can store that transaction in your database so this is just a summary of what we will be doing in this case and just to show you what our simple application is going to look like this is what we're going to be building so this is a home page um, you want to make a payment you click on that and then that brings up the form to collect the payment and using our test data um, stripe test data we can input um, our card details um, say 03 22 1 2 3 and post code say b 251 bs and click pay and your payment was successful okay now you can see if you look here what we've consoled um, log that's the intent um let's start not opening up oh right okay i think it wants this to go away first so um open up the intent that's the intent you have scroll and see what we've got here so these are the um details we've got from the intent um you can look at them and that's the intent id very important and you also have your client secret that one very very important as well and then when the transaction is complete you have um let's see what we've got here right okay um maybe not that one let's see I think that one has more details right so the payment intent changes and you can see the status of the transaction says it's succeeded so 
that tells you that you've got a successful transaction. And then obviously you can implement other things, you know, um, if there are other things you want to happen, you know, when the payment is complete, you can include all of those, you know, but the essence of this tutorial is just to show how we can integrate Stripe and then um, make a successful payment, basically. So um, right here, I have created a new um, Angular application and that's now running. So the first thing that we will be looking at in this case, because um, I would want to use a little bit of Angular material, obviously for the buttons here. So um, if we go on to the Angular material website, so getting started, we need to install that. So if you copy that and we come back to the application, um, close the server for now and paste the command to add Angular material. And if we go back again, so what we need to use within the components is the button. So we'll find that down here, button, yeah. And um, let's see which one, which one. So what example says, okay, maybe that one. And so we'll copy the code for that. Okay, and I can quickly get that from a previous application I have built. Oh, and in the meantime, I can see we have, right, so Angular Material is asking for a few things indigo pink yeah choose that team set up angular material just say yes to this um browser animation just say yes and that should complete the installation of angular material okay so while that is ongoing i would also want to um see from what I have um, right so from a previous um, project um, I could easily get the button I have used in this case so on the home page on the app page here I've got the styling um, so if we go on to app and then app component we've got this and if you let's run this first and see what this looks like or rather I could easily um, yeah let's run it let's see what it looks like so if we say ng save so we could get that running to see what that would look like and while that is on going let's see what we could do um, we would also need to create um, a module and component for home um, module and component for payments as well and yeah I think those are the very important um, models and 
page or, or components and components we need to create in this case so um still waiting for this to basically finish compiling so we can run to see what our fresh application looks like and i think we'll um we'll continue when this is right so our application has successfully compiled and this is what our fresh app looks like so uh, we're going to have to do some modifications here to get rid of you know um almost everything here because we really do not need them for the purpose of this application so if i go into um the app on the app component.html um essentially getting rid of um most of what we've got here so i'll remove all of that um put in there so the most important thing apart from the styling up there is this because this is essentially what we just need on the home page um so if you save that and let's go back to see what our application looks like okay good that's getting better now um if we go back in here um now we've got an error obviously because uh, we need to fix that so um let's work on getting this sorted out right so if we go on to our component and what we can do is to get okay so now um we've got our constructor we need a router in this case to navigate from that um app component.html to the home page and from the home page we can then click on pay to go to the payment page so if we saved that okay and then that solves that so now we need to create a model for home page and also payment page so close the server for now and then we say ng generate module um we'll name this as i said home so that's home module and we also need a component so we say ng generate component and what we want to name this component is also home so that goes into the home folder and then we need another um, module and component again for payment so we say ng generate module and this time this will be payment model so payment and we need um, components for it as well so ng generate components and that will be payment as well right so now we have our home and payment models and um, we can then run our application again and just have to continue now we have installed um, angular material because we need to use the button um, as you can see button you see that says mat race that's the uh, that's a way of including the angular material um styling that we have just installed so but we need to import models for them within our home uh, within our app model page there in order to use angular material so um we'll import that here 
essentially. So we'll import matte button model and importing it there, we also need to um, make our imports aware of it. So it's in there as well. Now, very important as well, um, because we will be working with forms in this application, we need to import um, forms model as well for this. So if you get that in there and um, also forms model, um, let's see, is there anything else we need? We also need to be working with our HTTP client model because we will be sending a request to our server. So we have to import this as well. Um, and I think that's us ready to go with this one. Now, um, if we also go into our home model, because we need to use the um, Angular Material um, styling within our home model, we need to import that here. And we also will be needing to work with um, Angular routes and router module as well to navigate, you know, between the pages. So we'll need to import this as well. And then having imported these, we then need to declare them in here as well. So, um, in the input so you put that in there now um router model for routes basically that's like trying to um initialize like our routes because when we go to the um when we need to load the routes for home Obviously, um, that needs to be configured in here as well. Um, what else do we need? Okay, I think we're good on that for now. So we can go on to the payment model. Let's open that up and see what we need to do here. We also need the um, Angular material here. So because we'll be using a button here, Angular Material style button, and the route as well. So and we need to import forms module because on the payment page is where we will be um, using the stripe form. So we need to import forms model there. Okay. Now let's go on to the HTML components and see what we need to put in there for each one of them. For where's home? Yeah, that's the home component. So we'll replace what we've got here. Ctrl E, delete, paste that. Um, it's a very simple um, HTML here, nothing too complicated. And for the payment one as well, we have a similar thing for the payment component. So if we open that up, Ctrl A, delete that and put this in there. So essentially what this is, is this is the form that we will be using for our um, payment to capture the payment data, such as the card number and, you know, um, how much we are looking to pay and also um, send that over to Stripe. So 
that's the form we need for that now um in the next um in the next lesson we will continue on to then um basically build or write out the functions for on submit here and if you go on to home page as well on click pay now so we need to write the functions for these ones so but we will do that in the next lesson so see you so welcome back guys now um before we go on to write the functions that we need um let's handle our app routing model first so obviously we need to do that before we can carry on so um, we have two routes um payment and home and obviously if you go onto the slash payment route um this is where uh, we need to load the payment model if we go to the slash home route this is what we need to pay, um, load the home model so um, we need to save that and then we can proceed to work on our home dot component now for the home dot component what we need to write is a function for on click pay now so we need to write a function for that so if we go um back here now um for this one we need to import the router and that comes from at angular slash router so um we need to use that so we can inject that in here okay so ng on init um we really don't need to do anything there so but we now need to write this function and this dot router dot navigate um let's just navigate yeah and this is the route we want to navigate to payment so that should take us to the payment page we can save that and um we can also save this now if we go on to payment page we've got this so we need to um it says there's an error there um title does not exist in type so right so we need to fix that as well it says the title is not there um so we need to find a, a name basically for the app so we can say um stripe angular i think that should that's fine right so if we go back again to payment components or yeah html for this so we see we need to work on on submit now when we submit the form what do we want to do right now before we can handle that um i think we would need to install the package for working with stripe in angular and i would usually work with firefly semantics um angular package for stripe so to install that basically copy the command there so if you have that we can kill the app um, server for now and then run that installation 
so um we'll wait for this to install and then in the next lecture we'll carry on with configuring this to continue welcome back guys so um we've managed to get the installation of the um stripe um firefly semantics um package installed successfully so now that that's done um we go back to our payment component and we can now import stripe service uh, angular stripe service from firefly semantics angular stripe and if you look at the documentation here you see that is essentially what's been um what's done uh, if we go to this link here gives us more details so right here you can see um it's been imported here and we essentially just basically copy what we've got in this code here to our app and then we'll need to make some further changes to get this to work and before you do that as well you need to remember that you need to go on the stripe um page uh, if you go on Stripe and get your publishable key secrets, which you would need here. So um, it's simple. Just log on to Stripe. If you, um, Stripe, I mean, if you do have an account, then you should obviously know how to get this. But if you do not have a Stripe account, then um, you will need to go on to Stripe.com. Um, I think I could quickly show us um a few things on that um let's open up to stripe so if you go to stripe dot com okay and right go to dashboard okay and on dashboard you can see um, developers so if you click on api keys then that would bring up here somewhere up here um, your api key but obviously i'm not going to do that because i don't really want to um, reveal my api keys but if you need to click on api keys and that would show you um, what your api key would be and obviously you need to be viewing the test data as well you can change that to um maybe if you want to go live you know that's live mode but we are working on um test mode at this time so right so you need your stripe um publishable key secret in this place now um as i said um just if you just copy what we've got in this code and we'll paste that onto our um own code okay so let's get everything um saved from here downwards let's get all of this so we've copied as much as that from view child then we'll go to our project and we'll paste that here okay now um okay it has a problem with this on in it so it's complaining about on init so obviously on init is not here which means we are not currently using on init so if we i mean to get rid of that error we really do not need to implement on init so we can just get rid of that for now and that should solve the problem um so right so but before we go on because we are essentially going to be working with um dummy data in this case 
um, because we haven't built a form to collect data that we can use dynamically. So um, we can easily use dummy data in this case. So let's declare a dummy, a set of dummy data that we could work with in this place. Um, so ID that, 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 okay. Now, as you can see, the view child and that card info there, if you look at the payment HTML, you can see um, basically, okay, that's just hold on, double check that. Where's uh, okay, okay, right, okay, doesn't really matter. So, um, essentially this is what it is and we now have our description currency price email name and id and very important as well we need to um, initialize what we need the models we need in our constructor we will be needing um, a router module so let's include that here okay and um, what else do we need okay so for now this is what we need but we because we will be sending out um as you know, um, um, a HTTP request to our server, we would also have to um, create a service, um, an Angular service, basically to interact with our server and the components, because um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a best practice to not actually send your um, HTTP requests directly from your components. It's good to separate the concerns so you have um, a service that does all of that for you in your application. So we will be creating that and also um, we also need to our Stripe key as well. Yeah. So good. See, uh, basically get that here so our stripe yeah public key will replace that with this now um i can show you here obviously because i do not want to um expose my stripe key directly in my application um i can put that in here which i have actually done in my environment.ts but this is environment.production.ts so um i have my stripe key in here not in here so that is why i can show you this one and in my payment component here i will be importing environment from this which is this not that okay so um the next thing we would need to do here um we can kill the server for now because i would want us to create the service so ng generate service and let's call this um, app. Well, let's call this app service. That should do. Okay. So that's created there. Okay. And then if we go into our app service, before then, let's see. I mean, first of all, let's even see what our application currently looks like. 
Oh, not that. That's an error. Okay. So um, we'll continue in the next next lecture to see what our application looks like, and then we can write more functions in our app service and also modify um, some things in here in order to suit our application. Okay. So I'm um, seeing the next lecture. Okay, so welcome back. So now we have successfully um, um, created our app service here. And as you can see, I've imported the environment um, to access environment variables and also the tap operator, RxJS operator. I've also injected our HTTP client in the constructor as well. Okay, so um, if we go back to our uh, payment component here. Um, as you can see, I have also imported app service as well because it's going to be used here. Okay, so now this is where we now need to work on the code. As you can see here, when the form is submitted, we now need to do something. So, um the way it works is when you submit the form, um, it creates a Stripe token first. And if this token is successfully created, um, or if it's not successfully created, then it throws an error. But if it is created successfully, then the code says console log success. But we now need to do more here. So what we want to do here and this is going to be an asynchronous operation. So I'll use the await uh, syntax. So we can say this dot on click stripe. So we can call this function, which would take in the form as an argument, which means we now need to define this function below. So um we're gonna take in form which is of type ng form okay so what we want to do is we want to subscribe to um what we get from this function so um if you understand the um rxjs operators um this is one of the cases where it is um, beneficial to use them. Okay, so return this dot, um, we'll call it payment intent sol. Okay, right, so which means we need to dis um, define this subscription up there. So we can uh, let's make it a private um, implement it at sub and it's of type subscription. Okay, so we can now go back here and we return this and we say it's equal to this dot app service that um, we can now call a function through the app service um, let's call that add payment intent stripe okay so that um and we need to pipe the data that we get as well and um subscribe to it okay okay so um for now let's okay let's break this down we need arguments for that um so but first of all let's um create a function like this within our app service so we can go in here and call this 
and we need to pass in arguments here and the arguments we're going to pass in here will be um, these dummy data that we've defined over there so I uh, can quickly grab that data and put that in here oh that's the wrong place sorry put that in here and we also need our upload data because we will be sending a HTTP request to our server so um, that will be our upload data to send and for now um, let's just say return true just to avoid errors while we work on the payment component page otherwise um, we're going to have some unnecessary errors before we complete the function in the app service there so um, going back here we also need to pass in the arguments um, into the add a payment intent stripe function so the same dummy arguments that we um, dummy parameters that we have up there okay so now what this is is when we call this function essentially we are um, sending a request um, to the back end to tell the back end Laravel um, application to send this request to Stripe to create a payment intent. So because of that, what we will be getting from um, this function, which we can use the switch map operator to um, get a hold of that, is the intent, payment intent. Okay and now when we get this payment intent we can now do something with it so what do we really want to do with that um, we're going to call another um, stripe well we're basically going to send um, this across to our server to um, store basically store um, the transaction in this case so we need to write this function again um, in our app service so let's call that function within our app service or let's define it within our app service um, so if we go here We can call store payment intent defining the service so we need some data in this case um, this is the data that we need and we also um, create our upload data essentially we just want to do this first and then we will begin to work on the back end to see how all of these adds up there so um, that and because we are sending requests to our back end we need to obviously declare what our url would be to the back end so um we're getting this from our url variables and this is the api route we will be calling on the back end for that function and for the second function as well um, let's define the url that we will be calling for it so we're going to use store intent as that one okay so um and also um we can just as well write 
um, a function or basically complete a function to call um, the backend in this case. So let's just complete that in this case here. So we'll send a post request to that URL on our backend with our data. And because we have not implemented authentication um, in this application, which is not really necessary for what we are um, doing, like just for this purpose, it's not really necessary for us to do that. But in a real application, obviously, you need to have um, um, authentication. OK, but this is just to show how to use Stripe. Right. So because we have we and implementing authentication, um, you may notice we do not have this part of the data that um, would be authorization there. So that's not necessary. So um, we'll send the request with that header and then return the data here. And also quite similarly for the second function. Um, would also be doing um, yeah, sending a similar request as well. Okay, for that, but that's to this URL. Okay, so if we come back to payment component here, right? So, um. Yeah, passing this and that this the client secret. So client secrets is something we would now need to define up there because um, we haven't defined that. But client secrets should be a string. So CL secrets um type should be string and we can initialize that to null so initially it is null okay and then um, if we come back down here we return this um, and we subscribe to it and when we subscribe, okay, we can then run a function. Um, yep. And then do something here. So this is where we now call Stripe to confirm or essentially complete the card payment. So we can say this dot Stripe. Now, this is a function that is um, basically from Stripe. So this is a Stripe function, not this. This is the Stripe dot confirm card payment. OK. And we're passing the client secret into this, which is now defined up there. Um, this that client secret um, CL secret. Uh huh. Okay, and we need to pass in some parameters in here. Now, um, these are the parameters we are passing in there. Um, I'll just get grab them and put them in here. Okay. Um, it's saying the name isn't defined. Let's see, have we got the name there? We've got the name up there. 
okay so i think it's got to do with the fact that um, we haven't completed this okay so um at this point we can then yeah our promise our response essentially um Uh, we can console.log just to see what we get back here our response and yep um i think we've got yeah that's the error there we have too many of them okay so um console.log that and we can now see if response dot payment intent and response dot payment intent dot status so essentially if the status of the response we get is now succeeded then we can do something so we can say alert your payment was successful okay we can alert that and then obviously form dot reset reset the form and then we can now maybe take the customer to a different page so we can say this dot rotor dot navigate and we put in the route parameters so we will navigate to our home page okay so what else if those conditions um is are not satisfied we just want to throw an error or show what error there is so so that will be response that error that message and we can then alert what our error was our error code okay so okay and also because we have now um find um, a subscription we also need to kill that subscription when we leave this page so in order to do that I'm gonna bring this part down here in order to do that when we leave the page we're going to check first of all to see if um, there is a payment intense intent subscription on then we'll unsubscribe before we do this okay we can then save what we've got here and let's have a quick look at what our app currently looks like at the moment okay not looking bad so if we click on that okay and then we can click on that but we haven't worked on our back end so um and we also need to work on the styling as well so we're going to do that in the next lesson see you there all right so welcome back guys and um as we said before in order to fix this um styling error um, as you can see it's not looking exactly as we um, said it's gonna look so um, to get that fixed 
let's go back to our app component as you may have noticed before now we had our styling up there but i've just cut that out and i'm gonna put them here so um the styling has been put here and if we go to the home component as well um basically same thing now um very important very very important is the fact that we need we need to add some bits of um, extra styling for the form so if we go to our payment yeah here let's paste this code this styling code in here and see what the app looks like now right so this is more like what we want so if we go to the home page um, this is still off but right okay i think we still need to make a little adjustment here on the home page uh we haven't got a styling for it so okay i mean if we just copied everything we have here and put them um in the home page um, I mean, you can always um, style your application to your taste, but just to have some little bit of uh, decency here. So, yeah, so now that's better. Okay, so having completed this part, we can now look at the back end to see what we need to do to interact with our back end. Because obviously we need to send requests to this um, URL and also to this URL. So we can minimize our front end application for now and go back to Laravel application. So that's a Laravel application it's running. Okay. And first thing we would need to do, we need to configure our database for the laravel application um yeah configure the database okay so go to dot env file and um on our database port okay connection we're using mysql um on the port i would usually use port 3307 um but most likely 3306 should work for you um but you can use whatever port works for you but i have configured my local server to work with 3307 okay then um here we can call this stripe La Ravel. that's the name of the database um let's see what else do we need here and very very important as well we will need our stripe key so now this is your stripe api key you need to get that from the stripe dashboard and you need to paste that here um, i'm not going to paste mine here because obviously it's not a public thing so but this is where you would need to paste your api key okay so do that and you can save uh, not that Control S, Control S, yes, yeah, save. So having done that, um, we can look at our um, config. So if we go to our config, okay, app.php here, because the way it works in laravel 7 and i think also laravel 6 is that um, if you want to 
use your environment variables you really just can call um, env that dot 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 within your application you need to call that through your app or config app.php so um, we now need to declare our stripe key here because we need to call this stripe key within the application so we will declare that here okay and uh, let's see what else do we need within the application i think that's probably all we need for now if we do need any other thing i think we can always um, get that sorted out so but declare your stripe key here so this calls the stripe key that you would paste here okay so make sure you have your stripe key here gotten from your stripe dashboard right and then we need to look at our cause configuration now if you are you know if you've created this laravel application with anything lower than laravel 6 um, even laravel 6 as well i think you may not have this cause.php um, set for you by default but make sure this is set as it is otherwise you would have cause um, errors trying to call your um, back end from your front end so that's done okay and the next important thing we now need to do is we now need to create um we can create our model and our controller but before okay let's create our model and our controller so let's kill that server first we can then say um, php rt send make model and we'll call this payment model and we also want to create a migration with it and also a controller so um, that's all we need for now in this case so let's create them it says model created and we'll continue um, in the next lecture okay welcome back guys so we have created um, our model payment model payment um, migration and also controller so um, if you go into the migrations folder this is our um, migrations for payments table so um, I have more I have some modification to this so um, I will put that in here so this is what I want the table to look like where we will have obviously an ID um, item ID okay so I mean in a real application you when you are paying for things you would have obviously the IDs of the items that are being paid for which is this okay and um, I mean if we had a table as well that you know had the items that are being paid for obviously we may want to put in our um foreign key you know relationship here as well but that's not needed in this case and then we have our intent id um i've just put in paypal or the id here um just in case you may also want to integrate paypal payment as well in addition to stripe so you can have an id for um paypal payment so if the customer had maybe paid with paypal or stripe you can put in I intent id for stripe and also paypal or the id for paypal if that were the case so but i have made them nullable so if you were to proceed to enhance your application to include paypal as well you know um it means that it's not in every case that this would hold a value or that would hold a value so they need to be nullable otherwise you would have an error okay that's the item price 
um, payment option. So if it's Stripe or if it's PayPal or whatever other uh, means of payment you are integrating. OK, so because it's possible you may not just want to have Stripe. OK, so currency, um, buyer email, item description and also payment completed. By default, this is false, but once the transaction has been completed, this will now be updated to true. Okay, right. So we can now save this. And um, the next thing we would want to do now is to install. Oh, before we install, okay, we can do that. Let's install um, Stripe. So if we go to um, Stripe here, the documentation for Stripe. Okay, let's. Um, right, so accept a payment. And because we are working in Laravel, which is a PHP framework, we can choose that and copy the command and come back here and run that command to install Stripe here. Okay, so while that's been installed, um, we are trying to make changes to our payment table. So if we open up the model for this, um, payment model, um, we need to do this protected let's say guarded G -U -A -R -D -E -D. Um, guarded yeah that's correct and let's make that an empty array um, obviously you can use guarded or use fillable here but let's just use guarded in this case um, so that's done and this is also done as well yeah so now we can then go to our database. So in our database here, obviously I have created um, the database here with this Stripe PayPal name. So you have to create a database here. Okay. And um, obviously there's no users or payments. These are from previous payments that I have made in testing the previous application okay so this is what our table looks like essentially right so now um we have installed stripe okay we can then run our migration so let's say php artisan migrate okay now we have errors we need to fix the errors and see oh right um let's see what it says unknown database stripe laravel um da, 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 da. obviously that should be coming from the fact that um there is also already a database existing for this so what we need to do in my case i would say migrate fresh so that's um, essentially cleans up the database because it already has data in it, cleans it up and then runs the migrations again. Okay. Show full tables where table type equals base table. Um, let's see what this is saying again. Um, let me double check that I do have the right database name um, just to double check that okay I have used the wrong database name um, I actually use stripe pay file okay yeah that's and then as well, um, just before the next lecture, I would obviously copy and paste my Stripe API key here because um, I can't do that now since um, I'm still showing this publicly. So but once um, 
I end this section of the lecture, I will paste that there. And then every other Stripe um, interaction we will be making will function as it should because this API key should then exist. So having changed the database name, we can now run uh, migrate fresh and now that works okay so um we now have our database table so we can then run our server again php artisan serve so we can run that again to continue okay now we need to work on our api routes okay by the way if we go into config just to make sure that our default is um web um alt okay default okay that's right so this should be web right everything seems okay here so we're good to go in this one okay now um we need to go to our routes api and we need some set of routes in there and these are the routes that uh, we need here so if you just put this down these are the routes we're going to be calling but um we do not need these two so it's just these that we need okay so that's done and then um in our next lecture we will continue to implement um the functions in our controller okay so I'll see you in the next lecture right welcome back again so um we're now in our payment controller.php file and this is where we will implement the functions okay so um first of all we need to import these um the payment mo um, model and also um we need to use exception in this case because we will be working with the try catch um syntax in this case now um we need to create the functions here um so let's this will be create payments uh -huh. payment intent okay so um it's going to be public function um create pay intent taking in request okay and so first of all let's even log our data that we will receive here just to be sure we are hitting um the right place before we continue okay and it's also a good practice as well to make sure you have no other errors you need to contend with before you carry on so um, that's request and oh so let's log console log everything that we are going to receive here so um we go back to this let's clear our console um pay now okay um first well first of all let's let's our log folder storage logs okay let's see have we got anything here okay let's clear this first and see what happens 
so but in order to do that we need to grab our um, stripe test um, card obviously the stripe um, card number but the test one so we need to get a hold of that and put that in here and by the way you can get the test card number from stripe and i'll show you where that is so if you go to stripe.com docs testing okay you can find international card in test card numbers so um, you choose a card number if you are in america you have a range to choose from if you're in europe middle east or africa you have a range you if you if you are within the asia pacific region you have a range to choose from as well so but i have chosen um the one for where i am at the moment so paste that um one two three just a random postcode okay and right so your payment was successful um, okay um okay we've got an, i've got an error here now the reason why it says the payment was successful is because i've got um two servers running for the same application so i've previously built this and my previous server um, has been on so that is why um this said it was successful it should not be successful so i've just closed or killed the server with the second um, laravel application which has gone through um so if we do this again pay now and i put in that put two 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 one two three um right good so this is what i expect to see at this stage um i console.log the data and that's correct um payment intent null right so if we go to the back end as you can see so everything seems to be working as it should okay so our log info it is showing that things are working as they should right so we can now continue okay so what do we really want to do here to create intent we as i said we'll be using the try um catch syntax here um so here cut and that's gonna take in exception to handle the exception here and we will be returning um, response as json and so we want errors and we'll get the message okay and um yeah and uh, i mean i could also add a http response code as well um so response let's say http 
unprocessable entity. Okay, so that's if we do have an error that's handled there. So, but if we do not have any errors, we would want to then obviously do or handle the transaction. Okay, so if we go here, I'll just paste this in here. And then we can explain what's going on here. Now, if you look at the Stripe documentation, as you can see, um, first of all, let's see, have a look at the Stripe documentation so, so, so we can understand what's um, actually going on here. Now, um, if you scroll down, so the create a payment intent, you pass in um, the amount, currency, and if you do have any metadata as well, you can pass that in there. And you need to pass in your API key, your Stripe API key. That needs to be passed in there. Okay. Um, so. Now, um, going back to what we have in here. We can now see these are the um, request data that we've got here, okay? And then um, we initialize the Stripe API key. Um, this is coming from the config API, the Stripe key, which if you scroll down rather right here, config um, app.php, scroll down, um where is that aha so stripe key so after php stripe key okay so that's where this is coming from and this obviously also would come from um the stripe key here which as i said i'm gonna pull in there later run okay so you pass this in and you call the Stripe server to create the intent. And then that returns the intent object, which you now need to return as response as well to the, um, the front end. Okay, so save that. Okay. And as well, we need to create this second um, function, which if you look at this, is the store stripe payment, okay? So that we can store the transaction in our database once it's completed. So um, public function, Um, that they can request and request. Okay, so we can now proceed to write the function. I mean, you could also do a log info here um, to see what you know the parameters you're getting, but I mean, everything's gonna work well in this case so we can just as well proceed write our try catch um, mm -hmm. so i mean i can just as well get this done paste this from the previous one and then we'll concentrate on writing the function in here so this as i said is just to um, store the completed transaction in our database okay 
So these are the parameters that we will be getting from the store stripe payment, which if we go back again to our front end application store stripe payment intent. Okay. So these are the parameters we're passing in. Um, item ID, item name, buyer email, um, and all of these basically. So we're sending them down and they are being received here. And this is then storing them in the database. And when it's stored, then we can return our response. Okay, so you can save that. And in the next lecture, we will um, wrap this up essentially. So before then, I would um, paste in the Stripe key here before I continue. Okay, see you in the next lecture. Welcome again, guys. Um, so I have obviously uh, we've completed the storing of our data, of our transaction data in the database, and um, I mean, if you have other parameters as well, you can also include them to store in your database at this stage. So um, what we will now do is to go back to our um, application, um, refresh, okay. And uh, let's go back to home page, refresh again, um, and see what happens. Uh, before that, I think I okay. Let's go on first. So let's say pay now, right? Then let's get the card number, the test card number to use. Copy that, and just as a note, um, I need to show you guys this, um. As I said before, depending on where you are, um, where you live, you know, I mean, you need to select a card number that corresponds because um, if you choose a card number, say, for the United Kingdom, you may notice that it would require, if you look here, there's nothing showing besides the CVC, okay? But if I paste this here, you can see it then requires me to put in a postcode. So um, if I had a card number for the US, that would change to a zip code. So the card number you choose is very, very important. That I mean, it relates to where you actually live. Otherwise, you may have to um, figure out a way to get around the postcode or zip code whatever okay so um put in that okay um two five one okay put that in okay let's see what it says the problem is Um, response okay so this is what the problem is it's not finding that response class within the payment um, controller so that means let's see let's see hold on If I increased this, okay, payment controller line 35, okay. Um, it wants the response class, uh, okay, we need to find a way to import that. Um, 
I'll figure out a way to get the class imported um, and we'll continue in the next Hello guys, so um, eventually I think I've figured out um, where this should be imported from. So it's going to be from this. Okay, so that should solve the error from um, the response import. So if we save this again and we go back to our application and let's try running it again, uh, we've still got our card number in there. Um, click P. Let's see what happens. Okay, we've still got an error. Um, let's see what it says again. No API key provided. Hint sets you API key using Stripe sent keys. Da 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 da. Right now, um, we shouldn't have that error because I have already set my API key. So I think what might be happening is that um, I've set the API key, but I think um, it's not being called here as a shoe. Maybe because um, the environment variables had been cached before. So when I made the change to include my API key, because it's been cached before, um, it hasn't noticed the new API key that I included in the environment variables. So what um, I would need to do is, um, okay, say PHP config cache. So this should clear the cache and recache um my variables again so oh sorry php artisan config cache that's right now so um cache has been cleared and it has been recached so let's run the server again and hopefully it works this time around so if we click again aha so we see it now works so payment was successful and click ok it takes you back to the home page and that there is our payment intent that we received from this line of code um that's our client secret which we needed um if you remember if we go into this um the application at some point i said we needed the client secrets here right here so um let's go back yeah so client secrets that's it um and if you look closely, let's scroll down to see that's our description, that's our currency there, and status requires source. So at this point, the payment had not been completed. So, but if you scroll further down again, um, not this one the last one yeah payment intent that last one and you look in here you see status succeeded so the payment has succeeded okay now one more thing you could do is this um i mean one way you could also maybe tell if a card payment has been successful is by checking on stripe from the back end so you could also write a function that um you know calls the back end or calls stripe from the back end say maybe um 
you wanted to include another route say maybe something like slash payment or say maybe payment um, record okay so if you wanted to do that in order to check on um you know who and who has made payments to you um you can also do that as well um i can show you one of the ways you can do that um you can use the stripe function and i'll show you that um if you just give me a second um right so so we had maybe another um, public function and let's say retrieve payment record okay take a request and request okay you could have something like this so um just call this say event or record you know as whatever you want to call it and of course you would need to initialize your stripe key before you call this function okay but then before then you'd want to say uh, you want to define your i your item intent um id or yeah so i mean essentially maybe say um okay let's call this intent id basically intent id so intent id should be say um Okay, could do something like this. So basically, you will be passing into this function your intent ID. You can maybe retrieve this from what you've stored in your database. So if we look at this database again, let's refresh. Okay, so these are from the um, payments attempt uh, we've made. So you could call, you could query your database to get your intent id which you had already stored at the end of um the transaction you know at store um stripe payment so when you create this you are storing the intent id so maybe you could have another page where you can check the records of people who have paid you know um, so you pass in the intent ID, or maybe you, from this point, you may decide to, sorry, not that one, uh, if we scroll up, yeah. So you might maybe want to query your database here first, retrieve your intent ID, and then get your intent ID and pass that in here. And that would give you an object, okay? And if you run this function, you will get, um, I mean, you could lock the info from this and that will give you an object of um, the payment directly from Stripe server. So this is a more reliable way of checking, you know, um, who has made a complete transaction than maybe just checking from what you've stored in your database previously so i mean if it's ever possible for someone to manipulate um the payment data within your database um they obviously would not be able to do that from on the stripe server so i mean if you have to query stripe to get a very accurate information of who has paid 
or not i mean that seems like a more secure way of you know doing that so i just wanted to show you that as well um so i mean this is essentially uh, more or less the end of the course or the tutorial and a quick recap of what we've done um, I should do a quick recap of what we've done. So if we go back to our front end, so we first of all created the models, payment and home models. Obviously, we put in a little bit of styling um, with the angular material button styling. Uh, we installed um, angular stripe package for um well for, for obviously for front end but with um where was that again yeah with firefly semantics okay firefly semantics and then we did uh, more configuration after that um especially on our payment component page um, so when you submit the payment um, you create a token you then if this token creation is successful then you call a function um, that now does the rest which is first of all to add payment intent stripe which basically sends these data to the laravel server and the laravel server then um, sends a request to stripe server to create a payment intent which receive which sends back an intent object and that intent object is now sent back to the client which is then received here so we've used this switch map operator to um, obviously grab the intent and then do something with it um, but we've grabbed it the first thing we did was to get the intent or the client secret because that's very very important so we've set this client secret to that up here okay just so we can temporarily capture that data before we go out of this um section this switch map section okay so we do that there and then we store the payment um intent basically so store that and then um confirm card payments um, this is a stripe function we've called here and we're passing this the client secret which is what we had temporarily stored up here because at this time this now has a value it's no longer null so we take that in and pass in other parameters you may have other parameters you want to pass in here okay and um yeah um what was the other thing again very very important thing let's see is there anything else we need to explain here i mean as i said um there are other things to pass in here maybe if you want to pass in description um the currency you know you name it you know um and then you get a response and if it's succeeded then you know yeah you know you have succeeded and that's it and here you're basically removing um this and also removing the subscription on ng destroy okay so that's um the end of the course and i mean if anyone has any questions um feel free to write your questions and drop them I will also upload the code on GitHub and on Udemy as well. Um, and very much important as well 
is the fact that this is actually a pro um, the, the client is actually angular 9 and the laravel application is a laravel 7 um, application so um, if you have any issues with the package um, you probably maybe like using the package the firefly semantics package you maybe may want to update to angular 9 and also um, angular and laravel 7 as well okay so just to be on the same page as i am to make sure that you know if what you're doing doesn't work maybe because you are on a different um, um version of angular or laravel maybe just upgrade to this package that i have this version that i have used and i think that should solve the problem and also um, quite important as well if you've been following along um, on the back end right you may notice what i had said before this is a laravel 7 application so i did not have to um, install um, cause you know like middleware handlers um because it automatically i mean by default it comes with laravel 7 but if you are doing this on laravel 6 or maybe laravel 5 point something you may have to install a cause handler um, in order to be able to make requests without having errors okay so um that's everything for now and thanks or congratulations for coming to the end of the course and as i said if you have any questions you can drop your questions um with me okay all right bye everyone